Number 10. Rodney Fox, then 13, was defending his Australian spearfishing title in 1953 when a great white shark grabbed him round the middle and dragged him through the water upside down. The predator released him as he gouged its eyes, but soon returned and attacked again. Fox jammed his arm down the beast's throat and pulled it free again, ripping the flesh from his arm. The shark released him, then returned a third time, dragging Fox along the ocean floor. After nearly drowning, the teenager was released and pulled aboard a nearby boat with his rib cage, lungs, and upper stomach exposed. Miraculously, his main arteries remained intact and he survived after four hours of surgery and 360 stitches. Number 9 a 66-year-old retired veterinarian named Dave Martin went out for a swim early one morning with his triathlon training club. Around 7 a.m., a huge great white charged up from the deep, lifting him vertically out of the water, both legs in its jaws, its serrated teeth slicing deep, fatal gashes. Martin was declared dead soon after being dragged to shore. Number 8 on the morning of April 12, 2015, 13-year-old Elio Canestri was killed by a shark while surfing at a beach in his native Reunion Island. The teen and his friends were reportedly surfing in an unmonitored area where surfing was restricted. The shark tore off the boy's limbs and part of his stomach as he was surfing off the west coast of the island. He was dragged from the sea but died of his wounds. Canestri's death was the 16th in a series of shark attacks, seven of which were fatal, that have plagued this French island since 2011. Number 7. While swimming with only a pod of sea lions on a tranquil morning, 50-year-old Deborah Franzman was murdered by a shark who may have mistaken her for one of the lions. She was reportedly wearing a wetsuit and fins. The shark struck from below, breaching the water and taking a massive bite from her thigh. Although witnesses heroically jumped in to save her after seeing a gray fin in the churning water, it was too late for Franzman. Most tragically, her partner had watched the entire attack from shore. Number 6. In 1985, Shirley Ann Durden was diving for scallops in Australia's Peak Bay when she was attacked by a great white shark, said by witnesses to have been 20 feet long. The mighty fish tore the 33-year-old in half in its first strike as her husband and four children watched in horror from the shore. By the time rescuers arrived, all that remained was her headless torso floating in the water. Number 5. Ian Redmond, age 30, was on his honeymoon when he was attacked by a six-foot shark off Lazio Beach in the Seychelles. Redmond was snorkeling 20 yards from shore and his wife, Gemma Houghton, was sunbathing on the beach. Married just 10 days, his wife witnessed the entire incident. Redmond had an arm and leg ripped off. The Daily Mail reported that beachgoers heard cries for help and that after the attack, a vacationer in a small boat pulled Redmond ashore, where a doctor provided first aid. Redmond bled to death on the beach. Number 4. In June 1959, Robert Pamperin was diving for sea snails off La Jolla Cove in California when his companion, Gerald Lair, heard him scream for help. Turning, Lair saw his friend upright and unnaturally high in the water with his mask missing. As he swam closer, Lair watched Pamperin slowly disappear into the crimson waves and diving beneath the surface, saw his friend being dragged to the seabed in the jaws of a 22-foot shark. Scouring the water for his remains, the U.S. Coast Guard found only a single swim fin. Number 3 in 1984, four shark attacks occurred near Santa Cruz, California, beginning with the violent death of Omar Conger, a 28-year-old abalone diver. Omar Conger was with his diving companion, Chris Reen, when a great white reared out of the water and attacked him. It grabbed him from behind, and while shaking him violently, pulled him under the water, Reem told great white researchers. The shark surfaced, charged at Reem like a submarine, and released Conger. Reem was able to pull Conger to shore on a flotation dive mat, but Conger died from massive blood loss. Bite marks and wounds suggest the shark was approximately 16 feet long. The three other shark attacks that occurred in nearby waters in what was described at the time as a mini feeding frenzy only resulted in minor injuries. Number 2 the five shark attacks that occurred along the Jersey Shore over a 10-day period in 1916 during a blistering heat wave that drove millions of people to seaside resorts created a widespread panic and media maelstrom. 
The first victim, 25-year-old Charles Vassan, was attacked as he took an evening swim. Five days later, Charles Bruder was attacked off the beach at Spring Lake. The final attacks took place six days later on July 12, 30 miles north of Spring Lake. Lester Stilwell, a 12-year-old local boy, was dragged underwater as he splashed in the creek with friends. Stanley Fisher plunged into the water and searched for Stilwell, but was himself attacked by a shark and bled to death. The 12-year-old's mutilated body was found washed up 150 feet upstream two days later. A fifth man was also attacked later that week, but survived. Since 1916, scientists have debated what type of shark was responsible for the attacks, with some believing it was a great white and others a bull shark. Number 1 on July 25, 1945, the USS Indianapolis delivered the world's first operational atomic bomb to the island of Tinian. Five days later, the U.S. warship was sent unescorted to the Philippines in preparation for the invasion of Japan. However, on July 30th, midway between Guam and Latte Gulf, a Japanese submarine fired six torpedoes at the Indianapolis, two of which struck the vessel. The first torpedo hit the bow, and the second struck near the fuel tank, splitting the warship in two. Of the 1,196 military personnel on board, 300 went down with the ship, and 900 were tossed into the shark-infested Pacific Ocean. At sunrise the following day, shoals of oceanic white-tipped sharks started circling the sailors. When rescuers arrived, five days later, nearly 600 soldiers were dead. The sharks had chewed most of the crew to pieces. Only 317 people survived the maritime disaster, one of who was Woody James, who later said, The sharks were around, hundreds of them. Everything would be quiet, and then you'd hear someone scream, and you knew a shark had got him. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe for more top 10 videos and also don't forget to check out our previous video.